Hey guys, back again with another video. Uh, something a little different this time, actually. I haven't really done anything like this before. Uh, it's kind of a, a way to talk about some games that I've been playing that I don't really want to do traditional reviews for. In fact, I already recorded a review on one of these games that I didn't like the way it turned out, and I did something for both of these games that I don't normally do. Uh, so I thought it would kind of make an interesting topic, uh, discussion kind of video, as well as like mini reviews of these games. Uh, so yeah, kind of a weird experimental video I'm doing here. I, I don't know what I'll call it yet, but maybe something like my journey to get uh, two platinum trophies, uh, which I guess I'll start off by saying I got uh, two platinum trophies recently uh, on these recent games. Uh, one of them is Nino Kuni 2, uh, which I talked about this in the games I've been playing video. And then just recently I got the platinum trophy in Far Cry 5. Now, platinums are not really something I go for. Now, I might have a video on the channel actually talking about achievements and trophies, uh, but I, I guess I'll start the video by giving my kind of history with them. Uh, I used to be super into achievements on Xbox 360. There was a period of my life from, I want to say it was like from like 2006, 2007, all the way to like 2012 where I was obsessed with achievements. Uh, I would just try to get the most amount of achievements I possibly could out of every game. Uh, and I would, in, I would, the way I would kind of uh, play games was so different. I would do all this shit I would never do. Like play competitive multiplayer for like uh, hundreds of hours. Uh, do all this tedious shit. And I'm not gonna go over like a discussion on, on this kind of stuff in depth because I, I do have a video on the channel uh, uh, talking about that stuff, but uh, just to kind of summarize, like, trophies, they can be really cool. I, I think you will... There's some games where they can be well-designed, and you'll play them in some interesting ways that you wouldn't normally have played them. But a lot of trophies, the way they are designed, uh, require you to just do so much tedious, busy work. Uh, collectibles were one of my always... Like, I, were one of the things I hated most. Because uh, a lot of the times, you would have to actually use a guide. So you would have to play through the game and constantly refer to this guide and check... Oh, there's a collectible in this area, I gotta get it. Uh, where's the next one? And you would end up spoiling the game for yourself, too. Uh, and it just, and I, it was horrible. Like, I fucking hated collectibles. I hated every time an achievement was tied to that. But uh, recently, I decided to go for Platinums a little more. I wish I had a good reason for getting back into this, but uh, I will say I'm not going to the lengths I did back in the day. Uh, I, I, I can't be that person anymore. I can't play games like that or else I'll end up hating everything I, I play. And I'll tell you what, uh, Nino Kuni getting the Platinum in this game has already made me say fuck it to a lot of games. Uh, Far Cry 5 I did it, we'll get to that why I did it. It was easy and it was short. Uh, and it was fun for the most part. But this game, getting a Platinum in this game reminded me of all the things I hate about trophy slash achievement hunting. Uh, and I guess we'll get into the discussion on this game now. If you play this game, don't, don't do it. Seriously, do not get the Platinum in this game. It's a hundred of hours of your life you'll never get back. Uh, fucking the worst. The most tedious thing I've done in years. Uh, I'm never going to get the Platinum in a JRPG ever again. JRPGs are typically the worst with Platinums because you have to always, like, 100% them, basically. And there's a lot of missable stuff. This game, I went for the Platinum because there's not any missable stuff, but... A lot of tedious grinding. Holy shit, the amount of grinding. Uh, before we get into like um, some of the crazy shit you have to do to get the, the trophies in this game, I guess my kind of mini review on this game. I was very positive on it in my Games I've Been Playing video. I look, uh, I, I'm less favorable on it now. Uh, I would still consider it a better game than the first, but not by much. Uh, the combat, it becomes evident that there's uh, a ton of depth lacking to it. It never gets the slightest bit difficult. You never really have to engage with it more on a base level, basically just hacking and slashing. You have to really work uh, to make it fun for yourself. And the only time it ever gets hard and where you have to actually like use healing items and like switch party members and things like that is on like the tainted monsters, especially the end game ones. Which that's when the game, the only time when the game was actually really tough, but uh, too tough, actually. It, it, gets to, it gets to a point where you have to grind to, like, max level to even stand a chance against some of these endgame bosses. But, uh, yeah, combat, it still kind of can be, like, mindless fun at times, but it's it gets pretty dull by the halfway point. Uh, the kingdom building, I still like in this game. I think it's still pretty addictive. 
but you eventually kind of like hit a wall and the way they de have designed it is kind of annoying you can't upgrade to level four like the max level of your kingdom until you get all the citizens in the entire game which no one's gonna do that i mean you can't even do it without completing the game you have to complete the game to get these post-game citizens uh so yeah i a lot of the you can't get like a certain amount of money until after you've beaten the game uh and a lot of the buildings you end up making are very useless uh, a lot of the research you'll do is completely useless there are some good ones here and there uh, the weapon and armor shops can be useful, but ultimately the weapons and armor you find in the world are going to be a lot better than any of the stuff that you can make, especially throughout the, like, the main storyline. Uh, I mentioned that I liked a lot of like the politics behind some of the, the, the countries in this game that you kind of signed the peace treaty with, uh, and that's still a cool part of the storyline, but the actual story itself is pretty bland, uh, and it gets, it gets fairly dull towards the end, and then the ending is just like... They throw all these revelations at you that aren't earned whatsoever, uh, and it's just it's just really a, a kind of annoying ending to the game that I really did not care for, uh, and yeah, it's it's yeah, I was kind of just bored with the overall story. And the I want to mention the characters in this game. There's a shocking lack of character development for these characters. I mean, they're likable enough, but it's like you you don't get attached to any of them with the exception of. Um, Roland. Roland's the only character in this game that gets any kind of, well, other than the main character, uh, Evan, is the only one that's actually got some interesting character arcs to him. Uh, other than that, they're all, like, nothing characters that uh, you can barely even describe, like, their personalities. Uh, so that's that's kind of, like, another weakness of the game. The, the skirmishes in this game, I mentioned that I kind of liked them in the uh, games I've been playing recently video. They, they get pretty monotonous after a while, and they become, eventually become so... I know, it's weird, the level balancing around those is really odd, because if you're not doing a bunch of random ones, you'll get under-leveled pretty quickly, so then there's like a story one at the very ending of the game where you have to like, uh, can level up, you have to grind to actually get through it. Uh, another thing that, I, I, it didn't matter for me because I was doing all the side quests in this game, but if you don't level up your kingdom to level 3, which requires 50 citizens, you have to do it at the very ending of the game, so there's a roadblock that can potentially take a long time if you've been ignoring a lot of the side stuff, uh, and this roadblock happens right at the end, like right before the final boss, essentially. And I think that would turn off a lot of people. But uh, yeah, it's it's still like this gorgeous world. The world map still has the issues I mentioned. It's you know it's a fun enough game. It's you know it's I, I definitely enjoyed it for the most part. It's just it's got a lot of flaws to it. It's a it's a very flawed experience, and it's rushed in a lot of way. In a lot of ways, there's this whole desert and ice part of the map that's pretty much unused. You go to this, you go there for the story and do, like, maybe a dungeon in each area, and that's it. Uh, like, they're completely unused. There's no, like, cities. It feels like there were supposed to be two cities, two more cities that you signed the the, the peace treaty with, uh, and they were, like, scrapped to, so that the game could be released uh, in time. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, the game gets super rushed towards the end, too, which is, which is kind of baffling. But, uh, yeah, a very flawed experience, but I did enjoy it, and I can't say I was disappointed in it because I didn't love the first game. I mean, I liked it, but uh, the combat and the Pokemon stuff really kind of dra dra drag it, drag it, dragged it down for me. But I think that game, like the storyline, was was better handled, and it felt more complete, that game. But uh, now let's dive into the, the getting the Platinum Trophy in this game and how, how how basically it made me hate this game. I never want to play this game again because, because of this shit. And this is, uh, this is one of those things with trophies, right? If you go for Platinums for games that you like, a lot of times you'll you'll end up resenting the game. You'll end up hating it, uh, and this is a perfect example. I mentioned getting the kingdom to level four. You have to do that and get all the citizens. Uh, a lot of the citizens, it's hard to know how you unlock them. A lot of them are the kind of thing where good fucking luck get you getting through it without a guide. Like one of them was in this random cave uh, that's really hard to find. Uh, that I just I would it never occur to me to go to this cave, find this and go find and go to this cave. One's in a location that you went like way early in the game, and the NPC that's there originally isn't there anymore, so you have no reason to go there. And then there happens to be a, just an NPC there to that you recruit as a citizen. Um, you have to do all like the tainted monsters, which for the most part aren't too bad. They're usually higher level than you. Uh, but I, I gotta talk about the, the main, the main tedious part of this, uh, and that's, uh, doing the final Dreamer's Door, where you have nine Dreamer's Doors in this game, they're like these massive, like, multiple floor dungeons that are kind of randomly generated, 
Uh, and the longer you stay in them, you know, this meter increases, and enemies will get tougher, and you fight a boss at the end, and you get this dream fragment. And completing all nine of them gets you a citizen for your kingdom. Uh, and uh, basically, once you do all nine of them, you unlock this final one. And the enemies are like level 70-ish in here. Uh, the problem is, there's a boss at the end that's level 95, uh, and the level cap in this game is 99. And when I finished the game, beat the main story, I was like level 60? Or 70, uh, I think 70. So this, at that level, this boss will one-shot you. And its health is so insane that you'll do like an inch of damage on this like massive health bar. And yeah, it's the slightest mistake, you'll get one shot, and you'll, you'll have to, from what I read, you have to do the entire dungeon over again. I didn't want to risk that, I because this is like a 30-floor dungeon. I'm, I didn't want to go through this shit again after dying to this boss, so I had to grind. And this game does not have a good way for you to grind levels. There's no cheap way to get like an item that increases your experience. There's no good grinding spot. You have to fight the final boss over and over and over again. I spent six hours on this final boss, uh, skipping through the cutscenes and fighting this final boss, just mashing attack button, uh, so I could level up to the max level to even stand a chance on this boss for this trophy. So that was mind-numbing. I, I, even with music and podcasts, I, w I was going crazy. I, by the three-hour mark, I was just like, what am I doing with my life? What, what is this? Like, uh, but at that point, I was like, I'm so far in. I had most of the trophies at that point. I was like, I have to do it. I'm so close, I can't give up now. So that's just one grindy, horrible, tedious part of the experience. Uh, the other is just, like, you have to, like... Well, the crafting ones aren't too bad, I guess, but it's a lot of, like, getting certain materials. You have to, like, completely level up your kingdom to the max level, and you you get money every time you're idle or just kind of wandering the world. You The problem is you don't get enough money by just playing normally. You just, you just won't. You won't have enough money. Uh, and so you have to leave the game on. So I left it on overnight to, to grind out this money, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's still this annoying thing you have to do. So a lot of the trophies at the end were, like, in the post-game, where it was just, like, making tons of weapons, tons of armor, grinding a bunch of materials, uh, a lot of this tedious, time-consuming shit. But uh, the other horrible thing, other than grinding the final boss, is the 50 Skirmishes trophy. So I mentioned the skirmishes before and how much I, I, well, not really how much, but I don't really like them that much. They're not that enjoyable. Uh, eventually I did enough of them that my guys were high enough level that I could get through pretty much all of them with no problems. Uh, this trophy, though, is just complete bullshit, where you have to do every unique skirmish in the game. And the skirmishes are kind of, they randomly respawn on the, on the world map, uh, completely randomly. Uh, in certain areas, like certain uh, certain skirmishes are always going to respawn in 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 this in, a, in this one spot, right? But it, it it might not be there sometimes, and you basically to there's the only way to know which skirmishes you've done is to check the battle and see if you've got hard mode unlocked on it. That that's the only way you can really tell that you've done it. Uh, so you kind of have to memorize the names of these skirmishes, and this gets so mind-numbingly tedious when you're missing just like one or two. And you're just constantly roaming the map, searching for that one skirmish you think you might have missed. Uh, and then just, when you actually know which ones, like there's these invader ones uh, in your around your kingdom. There's like seven of them. And they just wouldn't spawn for me. I'd have to constantly reload and save and reload, save and reload, fast travel to different parts of the map. And they just wouldn't fucking spawn. Uh, it took hours to get them to spawn. Uh, and... When I only had, like, one skirmish left, I didn't know which one I was missing. I was, like, fucking constantly roaming the map for this shit. Uh, and when I eventually found it, it was, like, this moment of, like, relief. Because this was the last trophy I needed. Uh, when I finally found that last one I saw, I didn't have a hard mode. I was just like, thank fucking god, I'm done with this game. I'm done with this tedious garbage. Uh, and yeah, so it took me, like, 100 hours to do this. It took me only, like, 35, maybe, to actually finish the main story. That's how long it takes. Uh, you you have to 100% the game, essentially. Uh, like, I've done everything. The only thing I didn't do, there's, like, uh, high-level tainted monsters. I did maybe, like, five of them. Uh, I, mean, I mean, they're easy when you're, like, max level, right? But that's the only part of the game that was kind of challenging. Some of those tainted monsters towards the end, uh, I couldn't... I couldn't... I, I actually had a, a hard time beating them uh, at, like, level 75 or 80, which is around what I was when I did all the, the 50 Tainted Monsters, but there's 10 more that will spawn after those that are really hard. Uh, that's the only time the game ever got challenging, but, uh, yeah, 
this is a perfect example of why trophies can be so so trashy. It's it took this game that I kind of enjoyed and maybe hated, uh, and it felt like a chore. It it's work. It's honestly work. It feels like something you should be getting paid for. Uh, and it, it just, yeah, it, it turned the game into an absolute chore, and I, I'm, I'm never doing that ever again with a JRPG. It was just, the it was the worst. It was, like, I don't know, man. It, it's it's kind of crazy when you're, you know, when you're grinding a, a boss for six hours straight, at, at, by the time you're at the fourth hour mark, you're just, like, you're sitting there, and you're thinking to yourself, what am I doing? What is this? This is, like, this is, this is horrendous. Uh, I don't know. It's, the trophies are, are not well designed in that game, uh, Far Cry 5, I actually do kind of like the the opposite thing. This is where I think the trophies kind of enhance the game in a way. Uh, none of them are too time-consuming. They don't pull any of this bullshit where you have to find all the collectibles. You have to find one of each collectible. Thank you. They they almost like they know that it's just would be so tedious. Uh, the only time this game is ever like horrible with the trophies are like the arcade mode, which I've seen a lot worse with well, the, it's multiplayer, essentially, competitive multiplayer, but... Uh, and then the hunting and fishing. You have to hunt, like, every animal in the game for the most part and every fish. That takes a little bit of work. You pretty much have to use a guide to, to tell which fish or where certain fishing spots are. But, uh, yeah, it, it, the trophy list in this game encourages you, you to try different things, to try different side quests, uh, to, you know, do all the hunting and things like that, to try the different modes, try the different weapons, try the different challenges. None of them are too long. There's some fun ones, like uh, basically taking out uh, a bull with your fists, uh, it's a well-designed trophy list that's not too time-consuming. Beating the game takes maybe, like, 15 hours. Getting the Platinum took me, like, maybe 20, 25. Uh, this, this I don't mind. I, I don't mind when it's not going to take that much extra time, uh, and they're reasonable. Uh, the only thing I hated in this one was the, the multiplayer, which I'll talk about the multiplayer, and I guess I'll get into my new review of this game. Uh, fun co-op uh, in terms of the, the gameplay, but it's got a lot of the typical open-world game problems, especially Ubisoft games, where it's just a giant checklist of chores for you to do. Uh, the stealth mechanics are fairly basic, nothing on level like Metal Gear Solid V. The actual shooting is solid, if unspectacular. Uh, the hunting can be pretty fun. Uh, it's got a great setting to it. I love the Montana setting. Uh, so the gameplay can be fun. It just gets monotonous after a while. After a while, you're kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to end this. Uh, uh, I'm not not quite into it as much anymore. There's a lot of cool AI interactions, and they're they're pretty funny at times, especially co-op. Uh, I gotta say, I probably would have gotten bored with this game a lot quicker if I had played it by myself. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of bugs to this game, which I was surprised. That's one of the things I, I noticed. A lot of AI bugs where I actually have to basically restart a mission or kill myself because the AI partner would would like just stop moving or wouldn't drive a certain vehicle, uh, which was kind of annoying. Uh, Storyline, I have to mention the storyline, I mentioned this on Twitter, it's <laughs> fucking garbage. One of the worst storylines I've ever seen in the game, and there's too much to talk about. There might be some analysis videos on YouTube explaining why the story is so bad. Uh, like, the cult that they've introduced in this game is so bland, uh, it's so safe, it's so predictable, uh, and the, the they wrestle control from you in this game so often. The main story has so much goofy, nonsensical shit where you'll be captured constantly in this game. Like, you're captured at nine different times uh, in this game and let go at various points. Uh, and it just, it's, the, the way they've structured the story just doesn't make any sense. The ending is insulting. Uh, it's, God, it's like this horrible ending to, to end this to, atrocious story. The characters have no development whatsoever, uh, whether it be the villains or some of the supporting characters that help you in, like, the resistance uh, factions. Uh, it's, like, the, the silent protagonist thing, I think, is really at odds with the story they're trying to tell with this game as well. Um, it's, it's, it's a mess. Though There's, like, these drug sequences in this, in this game that, uh, that play very poorly. They're very abstract, and they just don't work very well uh, whatsoever. They're, they're heavy-handed. Uh, there's, like, one where you have to, like, there's a time limit, and you're picking up guns and, and shooting enemies, and, and you're, if you run out of time, you fail, and you have to do it all over again. There's, like, this really gamey boss fight in one of the drug sequences where there's en constantly enemies respawning, and the boss constantly, like, teleports around the map. It's just, oh, it's... The story and the, the way it's presented in this game, the way it's told, it's fucking horrible. It's so bad. It's, it's like, I mean, I expect this from Ubisoft, but this is on a whole other level. 
Uh, it's 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 laughably bad. Uh, the ending has to be seen to believed. It's it has to be seen to be to be believed. Uh, sorry, in this game, it's it's so insulting. I, I've heard some people call it ballsy. Uh, I, honestly, it's just stupid. It's just dumb, and it completely doesn't make sense with everything that leads up to it. Uh, it just it's I, I don't want to spoil it, but it just ugh, it's horrible. But anyways, uh, the competitive multiplayer in this game is really bad as well. Uh, it's it's got a kind of got a kind of a cool concept where it's basically all player made levels. There's like a map making feature in this game. There's a lot of uh, featured Ubisoft maps that they made themselves, but a lot of it is is like multi like people maps people make, and of course like 95% of them are terrible. Like a lot of them are way too big, uh, and the weapon selections they give you are terrible. Uh, so it takes forever to find anybody, uh, and then a lot of them have have all the shit just thrown haphaz haphazardly. Uh, a lot of them have like overpowered vehicles where people just rush for the vehicle vehicles and as soon as they get them you're fucked. Uh, there's like this bug in the multiplayer that I don't know how to made it through testing, but basically if you're doing team deathmatch modes, uh, a lot of the times the enemy uh, names and the partner names won't appear above uh, characters' heads, so you can't tell which which people are enemies and which people are teammates. So a lot of times I was shooting a teammate just to realize like, uh, oh that's not an enemy, that's my teammate. Uh, and I'm not, I purposely not shoot an enemy because I might think it's a teammate and it's like, oh, that's an enemy and they killed me. Oh, great. Uh, it's bizarre that a bug like this made it, made it in this game. It makes the multiplayer almost unplayable. And of course there's trophies tied to this shit. You have to get to level 20, you have to get 100 kills. Uh, luckily it didn't take too long. The most annoying one was win 10 uh, featured maps in multiplayer. You had to basically like quit out of a match anytime you got a map that wasn't on the featured map list, which was kind of annoying, but, uh. Yeah, not a fan of the competitive multiplayer, but luckily, unlike a lot of games, they don't make you play it too much for the trophies. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been like get to level 50, uh, get 10,000 kills, and I've seen this kind of shit with games before. A lot of games do it. Uh, from what I've seen, like the Uncharted games love to do this shit, where you have to play the competitive multiplayer for hundreds of hours. Uh, the really bad competitive multiplayer for hundreds of hours. I used to do that shit, and it's the kind of shit I'll never do again. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, uh, I, I gotta say, I probably, if I didn't go for the Platinum, maybe I would have enjoyed this game less. Uh, as it stands, it's a mediocre game, a mediocre to average game. I mean, I like it more than a lot of Ubisoft games, I guess. Uh, I certainly liked it more than the, the trash fire that was Assassin's Creed Origins, but uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I still wouldn't recommend this. Uh, maybe at, like, a sale price of 20 bucks or whatever, but... Uh, Anyways, I've rambled on not long enough. Uh, are any of you guys like platinum trophy hunters? What do you think about it? Uh, I, I gotta say, Nino Kudis made me look at them uh, and be like, you know what, I, I, I might go for them if it's something like Far Cry 5. Again, I thought it was a, a good video to kind of contrast the two games, right? Uh, it's just a, a, an example of how you don't do a trophy list, an example of how you do one. Uh, and how it adds to the game in, in a good way, but unfortunately, for the most part, uh, you know, I've because I've been, I've had, I've done this shit before. Uh, you don't get a lot of uh, Far Cry fives. You get a lot of Nino Kuni twos. Uh, trust me on that. A, a lot of t trophies are just tedious, busy work. But uh, anyways, that's it, guys. Uh, have you played any of these games? What did you think about them? Uh, yeah, I know, kind of a weird, kind of experimental video. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.